I'm a PC. I'm a Mac. You might think that we were those guys who used to star in those computer ads comparing PC and Mac computers. You know, I would say, I'm a PC, and he would say, I'm a Mac, and then we'd poke each other trying to convince you that one was better than the other. We're not them. We're just cheap imitations. But you have to do what you have to do when you have tight budgets. So this is what we could do for the conference. That's why we took this gig. I thought it would be clever if I were the PC, so I could say, I'm a PC. That makes me the prior conferences. You know, I'm proud to be the prior conference. I have seen so many good things happen over the years in our prior conferences. I guess I'm not too big on change. Take the King James Bible, for instance. If it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. I agree, PC. You have done some remarkable things in prior conferences. And I've been proud to have been part of your work. You were perfectly designed to be effective in the mission and ministry of the realities of your day. But... So if you're a NAC, a new annual conference, what's the big deal? I've seen many operating programs come and go to fix the so-called bugs in the system. Let's face it, aren't you really just renaming a few committees, initiatives and core values? You know, as they say, moving the deck chairs around on the deck of the Titanic. I can remember the good old days when we'd restructure and recommit and rename and re-everything. Those were great days in both prior conferences. PC, being a new annual conference is a big deal. We committed last year to start building a new conference from the ground up, questioning how we do everything. We started with a clean hard drive or a clean sheet of paper. And we have been careful to ask the right questions, not to get in a hurry and get it all done, as much as to get it right. Right, I love the new letterhead and the new logo, but I don't see how we are that different from each other. A conference is a conference is a conference. So what do you do that's so different from what I did? Are you sure you're ready for this? I remember how upset you got with that whole Vista thing, and I don't want to go there again. You go ahead. I'll be just fine. Give it a shot. Well, for one thing, prior conferences were designed to make members. We counted members, trained people for membership, and believed that everyone wanted to become a member of something. And in those days, it was true. Remember back then? It was those who didn't attend church who were seen as different. You know, for a computer, your data is suspect. What's your point? Aren't we still making members? Well, yes, but making members isn't as important as making disciples. We've rediscovered Jesus' command to go and make disciples for the transformation of the world. As a knack, we believe that this is the very reason our local churches exist. And so with this clear mission guiding us, we don't want to make just members. We want to grow mature disciples. Isn't that kind of a play on words? You know, I say tomato, you say tomato. I like potato. And I like potato. I like tomato. And I like tomato. Potato. Potato. Tomato. Tomato. Wow. Tomato, tomato, and Rosemary Clooney. Who's Rosemary Clooney? George Clooney's aunt, but never mind. It's a generational thing. No, PC. It's a whole new mindset. It's about rethinking church. It's about reviving our Wesleyan heritage and realizing that our church's main goal is faith formation and world-changing action. We're learning to be proactive. We need to reach out beyond our walls to introduce people to Christ, much as the first century disciples did. Our old discipling method of sitting in a hen house to make a chicken, it doesn't work. Just because we go to church doesn't make one a mature Christian disciple. I hope this doesn't encourage that Mike guy, the DCM, to tell another chicken joke. It's almost like having a whole new operating system inside of you, isn't it? In the prior conference days, we tried programming our way to vitality. Even in the local church, we had the notion that more programs meant more people, meant more money, meant more happy members, which led to more programs, and we forgot about the work of faith formation and the raising up of leaders who could help transform lives and the world. Oh, it was great back then. I could hold a great big y'all come event, and people would love to come and be trained. 
We could do overnights and long weekends, and people just love to get together, you know, even if the quality of the event was so-so. Eh, Glad you mentioned that, PC. Programs seemed to work back then, but one size seemed to fit all. But our churches don't need programs anymore. They need effective tools and resources, which will help us to make disciples. So we're aligning our resources and their delivery with that in mind. It's a huge difference. That's why Connectional Ministries created the eTour. What's this eTour thing all about? In my day, churches were willing to travel across the country for tools and for training. Well, and in your day, you didn't have the internet. Our Connectional Ministries team, eTour, brings the resources to the district level. They've already been to many of our 11 districts, and folks are already discovering resources and tools that they didn't know were available thanks to their shares of ministry. They're helping local churches to reach out into their mission fields right outside their church doors. Boy, things sure have changed. I remember the good old days when youth were an active part of our conference life. Good news, PC. Sorry about the pun. Instead of a conference-wide youth group, CCYM has reached out to young adults, and now the Young People's Ministry Council exists to help the local churches develop youth and young adult ministries right in their own churches through customized training and event opportunities. And I remember when our camps were opportunities for young people to meet Christ. So many young people met Christ right there in those holy places. Great news, PC. That's still true with our four camping and retreats ministry sites. But in the NAC, those sites are finding new ways to resource, tool, train, and nourish souls through intentional expansion of learning opportunities for folks of all ages. Yeah, I remember the old PC days. People came from the furthest parts of the conference to come to regularly scheduled meetings, whether we needed them or not. And whenever we had a new idea, we'd just form a new committee. That kept everyone interested, you know? None of this go-to meeting, online conference call stuff. In the new annual conference, we're trying to be good stewards of God's gifts. We meet when we need to, we offer the option to call into meetings from long distances, and we're trying to save as much paper as possible by posting things on our newly designed website. Hopefully the day will come when every church will have high-speed internet available in their area. But everyone's trying. I heard just this morning that somebody in the far northwest part of the conference finally finished downloading last year's pre-conference materials via dial-up. But it's going to get better. Wait a minute, what's happening to the structure? I'd love all of those diagrams with the boxes and the arrows showing who's in charge of this and who makes all of the decisions and all that stuff. At one time, we could hardly fit the entire diagram on one page of paper. Well, that's another big change that's already happening. Some of our committees and boards have already streamlined their work through fewer people and less rubber stamping. They've realigned themselves around three primary tasks of the annual conference, and other boards and committees are doing the same. Some of the structures can't be changed because of the discipline, but by putting the mission before the structure, we can align all we do in places that really will make a difference. Restructuring is happening as we grow into better ways to undergird our mission and ministry. Back in the PC days, we had more answers than questions. How about you, NAC? Do you have more answers than questions? Not really, PC. The NAC has the vision leadership team, which works side by side with the cabinet in providing the oversight for our future. The visioning leadership team is charged with asking the really big, formative, adaptive questions that can help us rethink church, rethink our conference in an ongoing way. We're trying to become a learning community whose goal is to get it right rather than just get it done. You know, there are still more PCs than there are NACs. Yeah, it'll take a while for some conferences to catch on. Some are really stuck in the old paradigm of institutional church. Hey, it's been great to talk to you again, Nack. I really miss these chats that we have. We should do it again sometime uh, <clears throat> soon. That would be great. We've got a lot to talk about. There's a lot of challenges still ahead of us. But with God in charge, we face a future of hope as we do ministry to make disciples.